Hello and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here my name is Nika and this channel is all about everything that I'm interested in and that could be anything from true crime, talking about toxic society standards, basically anything that nobody wants to chat about with me so I had to create this YouTube channel so I can talk about it at all. Um, if you're not new here then I just want to start off by saying I'm sorry. I'm sorry I haven't been uploading. Honestly, life has just been lifing. I don't know if that's a thing. I don't know if you can say that. Regardless of that, this video is part of a new series here on my channel. I have not had the chance to come up with a name yet. So if you have any creative name ideas, wordplay type of things, uh, let me know in the comments. But obviously you need to know what this video is about. So my new series is about movies horror movies specifically or paranormal movies that are based on or inspired by real life events. so yeah let's back into this video So to kick off the series, we're going to speak about one of the most iconic and successful horror movies of all time. If you don't recognize the title, don't recognize the main character, you will definitely recognize the face. Today we're talking about A Nightmare on Elm Street with the main character, Freddy Krueger. Now, Freddy Krueger was introduced to us in 1984 by Wes Craven. It has become an instant success so while the movie budget was about 1.1 million us dollars it grossed over 57 million us dollars which that is just insane this is huge especially um, if you think about the times 1984 it has become a super successful french size it is successful there's no denial about that what many people don't actually know is that Freddy Krueger is based on real life events. Now, the movie was um, directed by and created by Wes Craven. And Wes Craven was explaining the story how when he was a child, he saw a headline about a little boy who fell asleep one day and he never woke up again. This little boy was a refugee who um, fled Cambodia during the genocide and he was so terrified and he had such extreme nightmares that he just didn't want to fall asleep. His fear was to fall asleep and never wake up because he would be attacked while he's asleep, right? So all of this trauma, of course, we can't even imagine what, what he must have witnessed, right, with his family. Now, one day, the little boy does fall asleep. His parents feel very relieved because, of course, you know, you can also go a bit crazy and die from sleep deprivation. Now, the boy fell asleep. The parents were quite happy about it. Then when the next day they walk into the boy's room, it turns out he did die in his sleep. It was believed that he literally died during a nightmare which was exactly his fear and unfortunately this was not an isolated instance at all dozens of other southeast asian refugees in america died in their sleep from unknown reasons in the early 1980s so these um southeast asian men were usually between 20 and 30 years old and they were all part of the Hmong ethnic group and these deaths were so mysterious that it's eventually they have raised um public health concerns right like where is this coming from why is this happening how can we prevent it there were a lot of questions about this Medical authorities most famously call the phenomenon Asian death syndrome, but is also known as sudden unexplained death syndrome or Brugada syndrome, or more commonly known today as sudden unexplained nocturnal death syndrome, or in short, SANS. 
I will link an article down below in the description box where you can read more about, about the Hamong people. But for the purpose of this video, I will only be focusing on the Sudden Asian Death Syndrome. One article from 1981 talks about a refugee that relocated from Thailand to America. His name was Leng Tao and he relocated with his family. He was about 47 years old, so he was a bit older than the usual demographics. And unfortunately, he also died in his sleep next to his wife while she was asleep. And when he was found, he had tears in his eyes. Leng was the fourth Hamong man that died within the span of the last nine months during that period. And he was the 13th death recorded since 1978. So again, as you can see, quite a lot of deaths within a short period of time for something as mysterious as this. So up until this day, we're in 2022, almost 2023, there's absolutely no explanation why these men have died. There was a theory at some point that this is because of the nerf gas that refugees would have been inhaling from the soldiers that were throwing these gas bombs at them. But this theory was never supported by any doctors. So we don't know if this is true or not, or even like possible at all. But that's not the only theory, okay? There was another theory amongst the Hamon community because they actually believed they were punished by their ancestors' spirits for fleeing their homeland. Because with fleeing the homeland means they couldn't actually support their land, they couldn't um, fulfill rituals as they would normally do because they just don't have the right um, equipment to do so. So the anxiety was around like, okay, my ancestors are furious with me, so they're punishing me in my sleep. This folklore is known as the Hamong Nightmare. In the Hamong language, if you break down the words, the nightmare spirit is referred to or often used in the sense of an evil spirit. And it also has the specific name of the nightmare spirit within it. There's also a saying used to protect yourself during a nightmare attack, which obviously I will not try and repeat, but translated it says something along the lines of to crush, to press or to smother the nightmare spirit. During a study and an interview with the Hamong people, 58% of people that were interviewed actually said they have encountered the nightmare spirit. 58% there was kind of an even break between man and woman. Now, it's, interestingly enough, when you read through their experience and what actually happened during this encounter, it sounds very, very similar to sleep paralysis. I will read you the story um, of one of the people that was interviewed. I will read it exactly as it was said so that I don't switch up any facts or anything. But just um, disclaimer, it is a little bit confusing because of the translation. So I will also put it up on the screen so that you see what I see as well. Um, okay. First, I was surprised, but right away I got real scared. I was lying in bed. I was so tired because I was working very hard then. I wanted to go to school, but I had no money. I kept waking up because I was thinking so much about my problems. I heard a noise, but when I turned, I could not move. My bedroom looked the same, but I could see in the corner a dark shape was coming to me. It came to the bed over my feet, my legs. It was very heavy, like a heavy weight over my whole body, my legs, my chest. My chest was frozen like I was drowning. I had no air. I tried to yell so someone sleeping very close to me will hear. I tried to move using a force that I can, a strength that I can have. I thought, what if I die? After a long time, it went away. It just left. I got up and then I turned all the lights on. I was afraid to sleep again. Honestly, this story sounds extremely scary to me. Again, this is what happened to this person in real life. This is not a movie. And honestly, I don't know. I think sleep paralysis in general sounds like one of the most terrifying things to ever happen. Um, I hope I will never experience it. 
although there is quite a lot of people that have lived through this so again we are between um three different theories i would love to hear what you guys think in the comment sections but yes Basically, this is how Wes Craven thought of the story of A Nightmare on Elm Street. And I'm sure, you know, all of these factors combined can lead to your death. Psychological stress is very, very harmful. Um, but I would love to hear what you guys think in the comment sections below. Please let me know if you knew that it was actually based on real life events or if you had no idea like me and also let me know what you think about the folklore or if you if this sounds to you like sleep paralysis or also if you have ever experienced any sleep paralysis i would love to hear and yes don't forget to subscribe like this video comment share with your friends help me to grow my channel and with that being said i hope i see you in the next video bye